in the way we treat our neighbor. It's in the way we show love. It's in the way we live. It's in the way we give. Hey, 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 hey. Making him know. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Tyrone Hillman, Jr. of Shekinah Christian Fellowship, and it's my privilege to present to you our message on today. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verse 4, there's a scripture neatly tucked in there that says that he wakeneth me morning by morning. And there is something unique, something special about the way that God awakens his servants. There's something uh, awesome about how the Word of God is able to make us alive again in areas of our life that have become dead due to sin. So I want to present a message to you that's titled, The Awakened Servant. God bless you. Amen. Turn to Isaiah chapter 50, uh, verses 4 through 9. Amen. Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 through 9. Amen. Um, I'd like to read from the King James Version and also from the Message Bible. I'm going to read from the King James Version first and then the Message Bible immediately after that. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Read King James Version. Starting at verse 4. The Lord God hath given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season. To him that is weary, he wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth mine ear to hear as the learned. The Lord God hath opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. Turned away back, excuse me. Verse 6, I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that plucked off the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. So the Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. He is near that justifieth me. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who is mine adversary? Let him come near to me. Behold, the Lord God will help me. Who is he that shall condemn me? Lo, they are all shall wax as old as a garment. The moth shall eat them up. Amen. I want to read from the Message Bible. The Master God has given me a well-taught tongue. So I know how to encourage tired people. He wakes me up in the morning. He wakes me up, opens my ear to listen as one ready to take orders. The master God opened my ears and I didn't go back to sleep. <clears throat> didn't pull the covers old back over my head. I followed orders. I stood there and took it while they beat me. Held steady while they pulled out my beard. Didn't dodge their insults. Faced them as they spit in my face. And the master God stays right there and helps me, so I'm not disgraced. Therefore, I set my face like flint, confident that I'll never regret this. Oh, Jesus. My champion is right here. Let's take our stand together. Who dares bring suit against me? Let him try. Look, the master God is right here. Who would dare call me guilty? Look, my accusers are clothes being of threadbare socks and shirts, fodder for moths. Amen. Amen. We're continuing our theme, uh, the call to serve. But on today, I want to emphasize uh, the awakened servant. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we bless you for your holy word on today. We ask God that you would not only meet our needs, but that you would make us alive again to your holy presence. Cause us, God, to be as sensitive. Cause us, oh God, in the name of Jesus, to be increasingly aware of all that you desire to do in our life. We thank you, God, that the hand of the enemy is broken off of our life. His influence has been eradicated and destroyed, and we are free to serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. These things we ask and pronounce in Jesus' name. Thank God and amen. Amen. Now, you all know that when we talk about our theme for this year, the call to serve, really, it's about us recognizing our need, our, the necessity, the, the, the essentiality of us uh, spiritually developing and in our purpose to serve God by serving in the interest of others. 
uh, one of the things many persons sometimes foolishly do is they disconnect their service of others from their service of God. But the way in which we serve God is by serving others. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so when we talk about being called, we are acknowledging that the sovereign grace of God's activity actually started before we responded to him. Amen. Uh, um, before I had the ability to respond, he first had to say something. And there was even work that even took place even before he said something because he had the form in me, the ability to even hear what he would say. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so the God that we serve is the creator of the universe, but in his foreknowledge, he yet chose you and I to be his servants. Now, we've made the distinction between servants and slaves because servants see the work as a privilege to work in the interests of their king, whereas slaves are forced to work. Hallelujah. God ain't forcing nobody to go to heaven. Hallelujah. He says if you don't want to go, you don't have to go. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so, but even in understanding our role of servants and that our obedience is simply predicated upon his previous work, it really is a continual, consistent reminder of how dependent upon God that we are supposed to be. So the basis of how we serve is the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. The Bible tells us, for the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. And so the only reason why you and I can strap up and show up for duty and be ready and on call is because we hide ourselves at the under the shadow of the cross, remembering that if it had not been for the Lord, which is on our side. Where would we be? So if God had not sent forth his son, born of a virgin Mary, to die, hallelujah, in our state, to perfectly obey the commandments and the precepts of God, we would not have the capacity nor the desire to serve in his interests. Hallelujah. And so when we look in the book of Isaiah, you all know I've just been there. And that's why I love that scripture that Lady Margaret read. And that's why I love Sister Alice's testimony because I've just been engrossed in the book of Isaiah. Just being uh, immersed into this book and seeing the colorful language and the giftedness of this amazing prophetic vessel. And so the verses that we've just read in the book of Isaiah chapter 50. 50 I said 50. Lord Jesus. Y'all know where I'm from now, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Fitty, hallelujah. It's not, it's not feel more, it's feel, feel mo. The mo, the mo. I'm sorry, y'all. Goodness gracious. Come on, Lady Hillman. Are you praying, darling? Come on, pray, baby. Pray, pray, pray. <laughs> so, in Isaiah chapter 50, these particular verses that we have read from this book, it really is reiterating the punishment of Israel because of its sinful ways. Uh, the verses, if you, if you go ahead and look at the, the preceding verses in like verses 1 through 3, it actually, it, it actually begins with the fact that their predicament isn't the random, capricious actions of a fickle God. That God is, y'all know capricious, waverly, uh, uh, vacillating, okay? And, and so this isn't just God having a bad day. This ain't just God, he, he didn't look at my track record, or, or he gave me the wrong blessing today. No, this is, God ain't making them kind of mistakes. And so he's being very pointed and very clear that the condition that you are in is not because God doesn't know what you've done. It's because you've been sinful, because you've been rebellious, and because you've disregarded the commandments of the Lord. God said, I gave you many times to repent, and you ignored me. You thought that by placating me with sacrifice that you could ignore that your heart was far from me, but I am showing you today and in this punishment that you cannot play me. Don't think you can just come in, wave your little hand, give your $20 offering, and keep walking out thinking that I'm not going to visit punishment because you've disregarded my laws and my word. And so God is saying you can't come in and rub, hallelujah, uh, foolishness over, hallelujah, over the stench of sin and think that that covers it. 
and think that you can walk around with anger and, and with an unresolved heart and, and, and with unforgiveness residing in you and with, with fornication and, and not, even, not even feeling remorse. Can't do that to God. Hallelujah. Immediately, God sends judgment in the form of Babylonian captivity. And, and just like us sometimes, hallelujah, we think it's because of our haters. All these inexistent people who want what we do not have. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Be like, now who? Who wants your, your apartment? Who? Okay. All, all right, baby. Hallelujah. And so... <laughs> And so they confused. They, 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 they wanted to make sure they were clear. Look, this didn't just happen randomly. God ain't just having a bad day. He ain't just tripping. This is because of what you've done. But here's the thing. He says not only because of what you've done, but even in the midst of what you've done and experiencing the punishment thereof, you still, can, you still lack the desire to humble yourself. And so you're sitting in the midst of your punishment, and you still won't say, I'm sorry. And so God has to ordain the prophet with the word so that they don't stay locked in due to a immature confession. Because if they don't confess their faults, they won't have mercy. So he comes and he speaks to them. Look, God, ain't, this is you all. You still got to repent. You got to humble yourselves even in the midst of judgment. And so during these dark days of captivity, God stirs this this word within the prophet and begins to talk about his ability. And he's saying, look, I need you to understand that even though you're in punishment, don't you know I'm the God that parted the Red Sea? And don't you know I'm the one that breathed? Hallelujah. And I sent forth my cloud by day and my fire by night. Don't you know I'm the one that shouted and I told the walls of Jericho to come down? Don't you know I'm the one that gave David victory over Goliath? Don't you know I'm the one that gave them the ability to take the city of Jerusalem even though it was in captivity for over four? Don't you know my ability? Don't you know my strength? And so you need to understand that what you are in is just a small thing to me. All it requires is that you would submit yourself to my word and to my authority and that's when we get to verse 4 it said the Lord God have given me somebody say given me given me the tongue of the learned now I told you that our title or the subject was the awakened servant so when we talk about the awakened servant you got to look at what God first does remember we're awakened not because of our response but we're awakened because of what his work was the Lord God hath given me God is the one that gave it. So the awakening of our spirituality is a result of God's creative enforcement through the agency of his word. Our ability to respond to God in a, in, in a way to God really is a result of his gift. Okay, I need you all to understand something. God doesn't need a dialogue for stuff to take place. That's the power of the word of God. God can create responsiveness and stuff that don't even have ears. Hallelujah. God was got to start talking to nothing. Got to start talking to dead stuff and say, Lazarus, come forth. Got to. Got to start talking to inanimate objects and say, move, and stars, you go over there, and no, oh, come on, sun, you sit right there, and moon, you go. Got to start talking the stuff that ain't got no ears. And so that is the creative force of God. That's why as believers, we just start talking. I be at home talking. Talking, hallelujah. Talking about what? Talking, creating responsiveness in the environment. Pronouncing the blessing of the Lord. Boy, y'all making this harder than it needs to be. And so when we say that God spoke and that he creates, God will speak into the deadness of my life, Sister Chrissy, and then give me the ears to hear. But it's all a gift. I can't even take credit for hearing. 
Because if I be quite honest, I wasn't born in Jesus' lap. I had a lot of issues. Still working through some things. I got to edit that out. Hallelujah. But God is the one that spoke and gave me the responsiveness. Not because they say, oh, he was always good. No, I just didn't get caught. I'm like some of y'all. Hallelujah. You ain't got a clean record because you've never done anything illegal. So y'all going to play with me today? Hallelujah. You going to pretend with me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. All right. Holly, don't you do it. I will come down your, I will come. I will leap down, come down there. Hallelujah. So God says in this scripture, look what the, the prophet says. The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned. But then he adds to it. And he says that I should know how. <laughs> that I should know how, 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 that I should know how. And so every gift that God gives has to be perfected. So God will give us a gift that's not in a perfected or complete form. <laughs> because God wants it to be a gift that's integrated into our personality. In order for it to be integrated into our personality, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. We have to allow it to be perfected by embracing the conditions and the opportunities that he creates so that the gift can become one with us. And so it says, not only did I, that God gave me the tongue to learn, that I should know how. And so every gift, again, has to be perfected so that it can, what, be used in service of others. Hallelujah. We can't keep bringing, hallelujah, a, a random gift And expect others to benefit through our inconsistent behavior. Thank you, Jesus. So, really quickly, here's what God does. God wants our gifts to turn into skills. So we know how. Let me say that again. Our gifts should become a skill. And a skill is when we add revelation, hallelujah, education, and discipline to our gift. Revelation denotes that I have an ear towards heaven. How education means that I expose myself to the concepts related to the gift. And discipline means I learn how to show up and discipline my emotions and my soul so they don't, they don't negate or abort my assignment prematurely. Wow. Hallelujah. Let me say that again. Thank you, Jesus. So God says, with your gift, I need to attach and assign to it revelation. I need you to attach to it education, and I need you attached to a discipline. The difficulty is many of you all are mad that the church won't use you, and the reason is is because you just have gift. You have gift, but you don't have ear. You don't have the ability to hear God, and when God says, I don't need to use you right now, sit down. And so what you'll do is you'll keep flowing and disrupt the glory. And when the glory falls, the ministers could not stand to minister in the temple. But if I'm an immature servant, I'll keep trying to gift, and I need to sit down and experience the glory. Boy, this is good stuff. Thank you, Jesus. And so when I skillfully serve as an awakened servant, people become freer, healthier, and happier because I'm serving in their life. Hallelujah. They become freer. That means they experience different dimensions of freedom. Now, let me just jump back really quickly. Now, important to note that when I talk about education, it's imperative because education is important for the exposure. Because the more I'm exposed to different things, it opens me up to hear God differently. Man, y'all, y'all, man, got to hear this. Look, hallelujah. So as God sends you, wherever your vocation may be, God says, I'm going to send you to a place that's going to teach you and open you up to things beyond your development. This is why I don't expect the prophets to speak to us about financial investment because I know that's not where they've been sitting at. Hallelujah. But if they start reading business journals 
and, invo- and immerse themselves into that climate, now they're awakened to hear God in areas that were once separated from their functionality. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you look at your gift. Say, okay, I need to be educated so I can hear God clearly, explicitly. Every vocation has a language. Every vocation. If you're an electrician, there's a language. <laughs> if you're a businessman, there's a language. Hallelujah. If you're an entrepreneur, there's a language. If you are a finance, if you are an accountant, there's a language. If you're an engineer, there's a language. If you're an attorney, there's a language. You got to understand force majeure. You got, there's a language. That you have to understand when God calls you into a vocation. Now, most of us, we just want to show up with gift and expect people to use us. Ooh, I like colors. So let me design your next clothing line. No. You don't understand historical. You don't understand contemporary. You don't understand fabric design. You don't understand the financials associated with using silk and polyester. And it, Come on, hallelujah. I, I, I used to dress my Barbie dolls as a child. No, 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 no. <laughs> we got to do a little bit more than that. Now, look at verse 4. Lord God have given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how, how to speak. And look what he says, how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. Then he says, he wakeneth morning by morning, he wakeneth my ear to hear as the learned. Woo, shoo, woo, Jesus. So as an awakened servant, God makes me sensitive to his heart so that I'm in sync with his timing. I'm sensitive to his heart and in sync with his timing. The verses that we've just read, there's a subtle nuance that's in there. There's a subtle nuance that really captures the necessity to move from gift to skill. And it's what's required of us is what makes us learn. So when it says, I'm a learned tongue, He says he wakens my ears so that I can hear so that I sound like I'm learned. Boy, I'm telling you, God is good. Hallelujah. So this servant, he can hear now. And so he does this. The, The learned servant, this is a learned servant. In these verses, he has to embrace the discipline of duty. He embraces his training regimen so that he can mature beyond himself. Real servants show up, not when they feel like it. But when they're called, you don't just do what you want to do because when you're a servant, you discipline the immature spontaneity that we sometimes call excitement. My goodness, hallelujah. And so we, di- we get what we discipline. We learn to submit ourselves. And so this awakened servant is employed in the interest of God to do what? To encourage other people. Because look what it says. It says, look, Lord God's given me the tongue to learn that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that's weary. So that I would know how to skill the heart of the righteous studies how to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pour forth wicked things. And so as God builds up our ability to speak into other person's life, he wants us to do it. He wants us to serve in a skillful manner so that I don't simply embrace a one-size-fits-all because not everybody is incompetent that requires your service. As a matter of fact, one of the highest forms of promotion that God gives us is when we serve kings. And kings ain't dumb. And most of us, we're so used to only serving people who don't know more than us. Boy, Jesus, hallelujah. And so we always come in with a pompous, arrogant attitude as if we know more than everybody. And if I don't do this, you won't know. God says, I will raise you up to a place where you will walk circumspectly and serve with the wisdom, gentleness, generosity, and kindness. Requires that flexibility to discern because it's not a one-size-fits-all. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And so we develop a sensitivity to the heart of God. It's essential because it is important that God use us to encourage weary people, tired folk. Hallelujah. And... 
the thing that I just got to drop in your belly is that sometimes, or I might even say many times, when you're called to serve tired people, sometimes out of their frustration, they're upset with God because of their condition. And because they can't hit God, they hit what represents him. Hallelujah. Now, I, I got to deepen in you. I'm not just talking about just, you know, because see, sometimes with the volunteer work you see with people who do out in the world, they can, when, when they get mad, they stop. But when you're a servant, well, praise the Lord. I do believe that today's message has been a blessing to you. I want to take this time to encourage you with a few final thoughts. In the book of Isaiah chapter 50, verse 7, it says, the Lord will help me. And then if you jump down to verse 9, it says, Behold, the Lord will help me. I want to encourage you in this, that as you allow the Spirit of God to continue to awaken in you, to create and recreate in you the ability to hear His voice and to understand His Word, God says He will help you. So I encourage you in this. Let God speak to you. Let Him make you alive. Let Him make you sensitive to all that He has to say to you in a spiritual sense, in an emotional sense, in a mental sense, in a social sense, in every area of your life. God desires to speak to you and I. So I encourage you, submit to His Word, submit to His understanding, and believe Him to help you whenever you get in trouble. I'd also like to encourage you, if you don't have a church home, to come out and worship with us. We're located at 790 Tennessee, right here in the city of San Francisco. It's right off of 3rd Street. And if you like, give us a call. We enjoy hearing from those that are supporting our program. Our telephone number is 415-550-8984. You can also use that same number if you have any prayer requests or if you'd like to order a copy of this message in its entirety. That telephone number again is 415-550-8984. Listen, we're also on the web. We have a website that's filled with clips and other material that will help you to grow in your faith and grow in your knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our web address is www.scfsf.org. That again is www.scfsf.org. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. And I guarantee you, God will strengthen you and help you when you call upon Him. God bless you and see you next time on Making Him Known. They'll start rumors on you, still got to serve. Lie on you, still got to serve. Show up and prophesy like they the president. Hallelujah, still got to serve. They're going to talk about you on the phone, still got to serve. Because you have to understand, you're not employed by them. They didn't hire you. God hired you. God hired you to be daddy. And so even if they say, I don't, want, I don't like you, I got to do what's right. Hallelujah. I'd rather you be mad at me than God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to say that to everybody here. I'd rather y'all be mad at me than God be mad at me. Because I can pray and he'll help me. If he get mad, who I'm going to talk to?